the 2020 Stack Overflow Developer Survey was recently released, and some of the results are shocking. This year, Stack Overflow focused on seeking diverse representation while asking for information about technologies and behavior in the development community. This year, Stack Overflow set out to make their survey more representative of the diversity of programmers worldwide. This year's survey was taken by nearly 65,000 people. Although they made efforts to reach out to a wider audience, the difference in representation isn't as large as they had hoped. There was an uptick in some race and ethnicity groups, notably those of Hispanic and Black descent, while other races and ethnicities remained similar or decreased. Similarly, they saw a slight increase in female respondents. So we can see that they are making efforts to improve the inclusiveness of their community. In the end, it's up to each of us to participate in this survey each year to get a clear picture from developers worldwide. Also, this year's survey was taken in February, before COVID-19 was a thing. So keep the timing of the survey in mind when we're reviewing information such as job and salary data. So here are a few key points from this year's survey. This year, Python fell from second to third on the list of most loved technologies, and Rust held the top spot for most loved technology for the fifth year in a row. DevOps specialists remain among the highest paid roles. When asked what steps to take when stuck on a coding problem, 90% said that they visit Stack Overflow. Over 75% of developers stated that they work overtime at least occasionally. And we still see evidence that people of color are underrepresented among professional developers. But we do see some improvement when we include all developers, not just those who code professionally. First, we're going to look at job roles. So here's a breakdown of the reported developer roles. At the top, we see backend developers, full stack developers, and front end developers. Next, coding as a hobby. Many developers work on code outside of work, and about 78% of people say that they code as a hobby. Next, we'll look at experience. This one is years since learning to code. 17% say that it's been less than five years since they started to code. 30% say five to nine years, and 20% 10 to 14 years. Next is years coding professionally. Here we have 40% that say it's less than five years, and then 26%, almost 27%, five to nine years. Now let's look at years of professional coding experience by developer type. Nothing shocking here, the higher you go, the more experience you need. So senior executive VP has more experience, engineering manager has more experience, and so on. Now let's look at writing the first line of code. So how old were you when you wrote your first line of code? Almost 9% say that they were younger than 10 years old the majority being 14 to 15 years old. And we can also look at this by country. India reports at almost 17 years old, Brazil 16, France 15, United States 15, and the youngest being Germany at 14. And then if we look by gender, the average female reports to be almost 17 years old, and the average male almost 15 years old. And then in a non-conforming gender, 13.5. Next, we'll look at education. About 75% say that they've completed at least the equivalent of a bachelor's degree or higher. And then if we look at the undergraduate major, of those who went to a university, 62% say that their degree is in computer science, computer engineering, or software engineering. So even though they went to college, almost 40% didn't go to college for computer science. And now formal education importance Almost 85% believe that a formal education is at least somewhat important, and about 16% believe that it is not at all important or necessary. So this is pretty much in line with the amount of people who went to college. Those who went say that it's important, and those who did not go say that it's not. So that makes sense to me. In my mind, this proves that a college degree is not a requirement to become a developer, but I'm not saying that you should not get one. Next, we'll look at demographics, so race and ethnicity. Here we see evidence that people of color are largely unrepresented, with the majority of those taking the survey being of white or European descent. And then moving on to gender, again, of those who took the survey, the majority, almost 92%, identify as male. So this is a very hot topic. We definitely need to see more diversity. Women and minorities are just as good as anyone else. 
It doesn't matter what you look like, what race you are, what sex you are, what language you speak, we're all humans and deserve the same opportunities as everyone else. This next graph is very interesting. This is developer role and gender, and it shows the ratio difference between men and women. Developer types above the dotted line have respondents that are more likely than average to be men, and those below the dotted line have respondents who are more likely than average to be women. So closer to the dotted line is closer to a one-to-one -one ratio. And if we look at the extremes, at the top we have developer ops specialist and system administrator that are more than likely to be men. And at the other extreme we have data scientists, data or business analysts, academic teacher, designer, and front-end developer. Those are more likely than average to be women. Our right, next we'll look at experience and gender. So of the respondents, about 30% of men reported to have 5 to 9 years of experience, 20% 10 to 14 years of experience. And the women reported that 25% have less than 5 years of experience, and 35% 5 to 9 years of experience. Now moving on to age, 70% are under 35, and only about 5% are 50 or older. Getting old is not fun. If we look at age and experience by country, we can see that the average age in the United States is 33, almost 34, United Kingdom 33, Canada 32, and then at the bottom, India at 26 is the average age. Average years of coding experience, Australia reports the most experience at almost 17 years, United Kingdom at 16, United States at almost 16, and then at the bottom we have India at eight years of experience. And so that makes sense with the average age in India being 26, the average years of experience being 8, that correlates. Next, moving on to technologies, this is the most exciting part of these surveys to me. So first we're going to look at the most popular technologies. So these are the most popular programming, scripting, and markup languages. Nothing surprising here, JavaScript and HTML and CSS being at the top. In web development, you literally can't do anything without HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, so that makes sense. One thing I do want to note from last year, TypeScript moved up a spot and passed PHP. And moving on to web frameworks, we have jQuery at the top still, and then React.js, and then Angular. And if we compare this to last year, jQuery was at 48%, this year at 43%. Angular was at 32.4%. This year it moves down to 25.1, and React was at 32.3, and is now at 35.9. So we can see React is pulling away from Angular and catching up to jQuery. Next we have other frameworks, libraries, and tools. We have Node.js at the top, .NET, .NET Core, Pandas, React Native, and so on. Under databases we have MySQL, PostgreSQL, Microsoft SQL Server, and so on. Now we have platforms. At the top we have Linux, Windows, and Docker. Now most loved, dreaded, and wanted languages. For five years running, Rust has taken the top spot as the most loved programming language. TypeScript is second, surpassing Python compared to last year. Also, Go moved up to fifth from tenth last year. Under dreaded we have VBA, Objective-C, Perl, Assembly. And wanted, we have Python, JavaScript, Go, TypeScript, and Rust. Next, we have the most loved, dreaded, and wanted web frameworks. This was very surprising to me. ASP.NET Core is at the top this year. Last year, it was in fifth place, so I'm not sure what's going on here. Of course, after that, we have React.js and Vue.js. And then a new one on the survey, Gatsby, debuts at fifth place. Under dreaded, we have Angular.js. Now don't confuse this with Angular, they are different. And then Drupal, jQuery, and ASP.NET. Again, ASP.NET is different than ASP.NET Core. Under Wanted, we have React.js, Vue.js, and Angular. Next we'll look at most loved, dreaded, and wanted other frameworks, libraries, and tools. At the top here under loved, we have .NET Core, Torch, PyTorch, Flutter, and Pandas. Under dreaded, we have Chief, Cordova, Puppet, and Xamarin and then Wanted, Node.js, TensorFlow, React Native, and Flutter. Next we have Most Loved, Dreaded, and Wanted Databases. So under Loved we have Redis, PostgreSQL, Elasticsearch, MongoDB, and Firebase. 
Under Dreaded, we have IBM DB2, Oracle, Couchbase, and Cassandra. And then under Wanted, we have MongoDB, PostgreSQL, Elasticsearch, Redis, and Firebase. Next is Most Loved, Dreaded, and Wanted Platforms. At the top on Loved is Linux, Docker, Kubernetes, and AWS. Under Dreaded, WordPress, IBM Cloud or Watson, Heroku, Slack Apps and Integrations. And then under Wanted, we have Docker, AWS, Kubernetes, and Linux. Now let's look at development environments and tools. Under Developers Primary Operating Systems, almost 50% have Windows. And then Mac and Linux are very close second. Next, we look at collaboration tools. 82% use GitHub. And then we have Slack, Jira, and Google Suite. For researching tools, so when there's a new tool to research, how do you go about the research? 77% say that they'll start a free trial. Almost 68% say that they'll ask someone else. 64% say that they'll visit developer communities like Stack Overflow, and so on. Now let's look at the top paying technologies. First, we'll look worldwide. At the top, we have Perl at 76,000. Scala at 76,000, Go at 74,000, Rust at 74,000, and Ruby at 71,000. Specifically in the United States, the list is a little bit different. Scala is at the top at 150,000, Go is at 140,000, Objective C 135,000, Kotlin, Perl, Ruby, and Rust are all at 130,000. Next, we'll look at learning new technology and how frequently you do that. 37% say that they learn something new every few months. 36% say once a year. 23% say once every few years. And 2% say once a decade. If you're not learning, you're not growing. Next, the survey asked, what do you do when you get stuck? 90% say they visit Stack Overflow. 54% say they do other work and come back later. 52% say they watch help or tutorial videos. Almost 50% say they call a coworker or friend. 43% say they go for a walk or other physical activity. That's a good suggestion. 15% play games, 11% meditate, 10% panic, and 10% say they visit another developer community. All right, that already visited feeling. So developers were asked how they feel when searching for a coding solution online, and the first result link is purple because they've already visited the link. About half of the respondents chose Hello Old Friend, which suggests that it may be a frequent occurrence for certain tasks. And this could be why over 2.1 million people visited the How Do I Exit the Vim Editor question on Stack Overflow. All right, next we're going to look at work. So first up is employment status. 82% say that they are employed full-time. 9.5% say they're independent contractor, freelancer, or self-employed. All right, next we'll look at employment status by geography. So in the United States, 78% uh, are full-time, almost 9% students. In India, 73% full-time and 16% student. Uh, United Kingdom is 77% full-time, almost 10% independent contractor, freelancer, or self-employed, and then 8% student. In Germany, we have 70% full-time, 14% student. And in Canada, 72% full-time and 13% student. Over 75% of developers work overtime at least occasionally. Next, we'll look at company size. So 21% say that they work for companies that have 20 to 99 employees. Almost 19% work at companies who have 100 to 499 employees. All right, next we'll look at onboarding. Almost half of the respondents report that their company has a good onboarding process. Now, the presence of DevOps personnel, this is split. 43% say that there are dedicated DevOps personnel at their company. 43% say that there are not. And 12% say that they don't know. All right, next we'll look at the importance of DevOps. So 48% say that it's extremely important. 31% say it's somewhat important. Let me just say, it's important. Next, we'll look at career values. So how do developers feel about their jobs? 32% say very satisfied and 30% say slightly satisfied. Now, when looking for a job, let's look at job search status. 
57% say that I am not actively looking, but I am open to new opportunities. 25% say that I'm not interested in a new job. Next, we'll look at job hunt factors. So why would you be looking for a better job? 70% say better compensation. 58% say wanting to work with new technologies. 57 say they're just curious about other opportunities. 52% say growth or leadership opportunities. So now let's look at most important job factors. So this excludes compensation, benefits, and location. So if compensation, benefits, and location were not a factor, what other things do you think are important about the job? Let's look at the responses specifically from men versus women. Here we'll see some priority differences. 52% of men say that the languages, frameworks, and other technologies they'd be working with was important. 44% said the office environment or company culture. And then 44% said flex time or flexible schedule. The top for women was 48% said office environment or company culture. 45% said flex time or flexible schedule. 41% said the languages, frameworks, and other technologies. And then 41% said opportunities for professional development. Now let's look at salary by developer type. So we'll look at global first. Engineering manager at 92,000. Engineer site reliability at 80,000. DevOps at 68,000 and data engineer at 65,000. Specifically in the United States, engineering manager is at 152,000, site reliability engineer at 140,000, data scientist or machine learning specialist, DevOps specialist, and data engineer all at 125,000. The last graph that we're going to look at is hours worked per week. Overall, just over 50% say that they work 40 to 44 hours per week. If we look specifically at the developer type, it looks like those who have higher roles work a little bit more. And then specifically by country, it looks like the United States works the most at 41, almost 42 hours, and the UK at 39.2. So it's always interesting each year to see these results. Now I know that these results are not all inclusive. These results are based on the group of people who took the survey. I'm personally going to make a concerted effort to help Stack Overflow get the word out for the next survey, and hopefully there will be more participation from the community next year. Also, remember that you should not base your life decisions on this survey. This gives you a gauge of opinions in the community, but in the end, it's up to you to find your path. Pick a technology that you're passionate about and go for it. Remember that we're all human. Treat others as you would like to be treated. Put yourself in other people's shoes and try to give others the benefit of the doubt whenever possible. Never stop learning and never give up. Help me out by liking this video and subscribing if you haven't already.